Hello again. Now on to this story. Uh, Rochefeld Wind Farm in the Karoo is the latest utility scale renewable energy project to connect to ESCOM's grid. The energy generated will satisfy the needs of roughly 49,000 households every year while avoiding the emission of significant carbon emissions. Now let's find out more about this farm and how it actually works. How did it come about? Matteo Brambilla is the chief executive of Red Rocket, the company that's behind this energy project is joining us now virtually from Cape Town. Mr. Brambilla, good afternoon. Thank you very much for your time on today. Uh, firstly, before I get to find out a little bit more about this, one would, of course, assume that uh, the power cuts we've seen in the country by ESCOM has uh, inspired many people to come up with renewable energy projects. This wind farm, did it come about because of that, or was it long in the plan as a way of mitigating against climate change risks? Uh, no, the, with the wind farm, obviously, <clears throat> uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much for the, for the, for the invitation to speak today. Um, no, the wind farm has been uh, planned uh, uh, since uh, 2012, 2013. It takes a long time to, to develop um, wind under the RAPP tender these projects and then uh, and then uh, taking them uh, online obviously uh, this uh, um, this program is uh, helping significantly yes. ESCOM and especially okay. in recent years okay how much power is being generated by this wind farm uh, 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 what is the contribution to ESCOM's grid yeah well the the, the the, the wind farm has a uh, installed capacity of 147 megawatt, which is the, the, the currently the, the cap um, of the maximum installation for wind farms in uh, in the country, and can generate uh, around 610 gigawatt hours per annum. Which, as you rightly said, um, it's more or less the, the energy needs of 50,000 households. Okay, just just explain to us. I mean, uh, w what's involved in setting up such a, a wind farm? Well, um, um, in, in particular in South Africa, there is obviously a long process to develop the, the, the wind farm. It takes a, um, a long time to um, get an environmental authorization with uh, um, various uh, um, specialistic studies. And then there is the technical part on um, planning the, the wind farms in a specific uh, area getting all the uh, land that, that, uh, that you require, all the agreements with the various uh, stakeholders. And then you need to submit it in the uh, REIPP um, tender. And uh, if you win, and these tenders are um, like Dutch tenders, so the best, the lower tariffs win um, are, are awarded. And then you have uh, more or less one year to reach financial close and run for it took a bit longer and then around two years, two to three years to, to build them, according to the connection solution that is given to you by ESCOM. Yeah, and I mean, uh, besides giving people electricity, there's a huge economic input, I guess, for the local residents of this Karoo area. How many people have been employed here or are still being employed? Well, during construction, there was a peak of uh, 800, uh, 850 um, people on, uh, on site. And uh, now that it's reached operations, obviously uh, these plants uh, um, uh, are run with a, a smaller team in terms of operation and maintenance, which is around 10. Then we have uh, eight permanent bird watchers. Uh, we have two um, community liaison officers and 12 uh, in security. In total, 32 people for 20 years, more or less. Yeah, what does it require to maintain it? Um, well, normally to maintain it is like uh, you have a, a main uh, contract with the turbine manufacturer to the uh, operation and maintenance, monitoring and control of the of the of the of the wind towers, and then you have uh, um, some other contracts in order to maintain the the connection. Uh, the part of the connection stays with the wind farm, as well as the um, uh, roads and and the infrastructure that is built around the wind farm. Yeah, is this one of the of the first in in that area that is now feeding or connected now to the ESCOM grid and contributing enough kilowatts? I think that is the first one to be connected in the area, but there are a few others uh, that in the same round four of the program have been uh, awarded, and then um, in the recent round five uh, uh, um, round there has been um, another uh, two 
from us and uh, and other two or three from others from other um, IPPs. What happens when there's no wind blowing? Uh, the turbines don't work. Very simple. <laughs> no wind, no work. So, are you planning more? You said you got but, two but others. But I can tell you. But I can. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Tell they me. don't work. But I can tell you that in, in that specific area. We, we can say that the, the wind farm has um, a, um, a capacity factor of around 50%, which means that for 50% of the time in a year it works. And uh, when it's the windy season, it reaches peaks of 70, 75%. So, okay. um, yeah, obviously when there's no wind, they don't work. Yeah, I mean, I'm a, I I'm a lay when... person. Yeah, I'm a lay person. Even at 50%, you do produce enough uh, does it enable you to store power? I mean, can you do that? Um, you can technically do it. We are not allowed to do it because the current program doesn't allow to do that. But that will be the next stage, I think, where um, storage is becoming a technology that is widely accepted um, um, everywhere. It will become a constant um, a feature in uh, renewable energy plants, uh, whether they are solar or wind or um, or hydro, they, they will be able to store electricity and and and, uh, and deliver it on the grid when it's uh, most required at peak time. Here in yeah. this country, mm, early morning and and uh, between uh, like six to ten o'clock in the evening. So, will Red Rocket be pushing for that change? Well, absolutely. We look forward to that. Yeah, and 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 beyond the the, the Karoo, you said you've got two plants. You've got one more. This one we're talking about now, the the Rochafeld Wind Farm. Uh, uh, if you look at the, at South Africa, is the Western Cape the only place where you think wind farms, the Karoo wind farms, can be sustainable? Um, no, well, the Karoo is a, it's a quite a, an area where the, where wind blows uh, significantly, but the whole Western Cape is uh, is uh, suitable for wind. Similarly, Eastern Cape and and a part of uh, Kizene. Obviously, the more you go inland, the less uh, wind there is. Okay. Uh, but no, there are many areas in South Africa where where wind farms can be implemented. Okay, and what about you? This is good renewable energy, reducing carbon emissions, but there must have been some carbon footprint when you were installing it, while you were busy constructing. What was the carbon footprint there, very briefly? Well, uh, um, the carbon footprint is very difficult to, to, to determine um, on a, in, a, in, a, in, in a single number, because then there is also the carbon, carbon footprint of the manufacturing of the various uh, stuff. What I can tell you for sure is that this uh, wind farm will be able to avoid emissions if it was a conventional power um, 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 plant of half a million tons of CO2 per annum. Okay, thank you very much for your time there, Mr. Matteo Brambilla, Chief Executive Officer of Red Rocket. They've just managed to connect one of their new wind farms in the Karoo to ESCOM's grid.